And so in the conclusion, I want to give you just four practical steps on how to receive the gift of speaking in tongues. As we are praying for this every service and we are encouraging each one of you to encourage you to ask God for more. If you come here, you've gotten saved. I want to let you know that there is a relationship with Holy Spirit God wants you to have. Jesus and Heavenly Father are sitting on the throne. The Holy Spirit is on this earth and He wants to have a relationship with you. And He wants to not only fill you with, with Himself that you speak in other language, but He also wants to fill you with Himself that you have in power to live a Christian life and spread the message of Jesus Christ. Somebody say Amen. The first thing is that, is you have to relax. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit came upon disciples in book of Acts chapter 2 verse 4 verse 2 we see one thing is actually I didn't see that before they were seated disciples were not praying disciples were not even on their knees disciples were seated and as they were sitting the Bible says the Holy Spirit came and they started to speak in other tongues one of the biggest hindrances to receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit is being panic stressed out or anxious. Sometimes I go to camps and they ask me to pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you see this men and women coming to the front as though they're pregnant about to deliver something. And, and they feel like if, if I miss this I'm gonna go straight to hell. There's this tension, there's this panic. Until you relax even today when we're going to pray if the Lord gives us opportunity if we're going to pray one thing you have to understand the Holy Spirit will baptize you but you gotta chill just like that the baptism of the Holy Spirit doesn't make you more righteous the love of God the grace of Jesus that's already our foundation and to receive that you just have to relax even last Wednesday when people who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they testified one thing they said until I actually relaxed and I said listen there's no pressure I just focus on Jesus I glorify Jesus the Holy Spirit lives inside of me and as He fills me and they just yield their tongue to Him next thing that happens they started to speak with the heavenly language and God began to fill them with the presence of the Holy Spirit you have to relax the Holy Spirit wants you to, when you get relaxed, don't be stressed, don't live in panic, don't be like, oh my goodness, but I'm a home group leader, you know, I, I really have to get it, why, why, so that you can put it like a badge in front of your home group? You just have to relax and that's when God will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Number two, tongues are not just for praying. The Bible says that they spoke with other tongues. The Bible doesn't say they prayed in other tongues. Did you know that when the first Gentile received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Peter was preaching and as Peter is preaching, preaching about Jesus' crucifixion, how Jesus is the Son of God, the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes upon the first, this guy was a Roman, a Roman soldier, he wasn't like a Christian, he was not even a Jewish and right away as they were hearing the message, they were not even praying, the Holy Spirit came and they start speaking in tongues. Apostle Paul says that he likes to sing in tongues. As sometimes you hear during worship when our worship team you know takes that moment when the music is playing and we all sing and we sing to the Lord and then we sing in a language unknown and you may be saying wow they're singing in Russian it's so beautiful it's actually not Russian <laughs> and all of us Russians were like well Spinner is singing Spanish man Spanish is so beautiful but it's not Spanish and so I believe as we come, as you come more to church, you will begin to hear more and more when we worship God, not only with our mind, but we worship God also with our spirit. So tongues is not only for prayer. You can speak even when you don't pray. You can worship with tongues even when you don't pray. Can somebody say amen? Number three, the Holy Spirit gives utterance, but we speak in tongues. The Bible says they were filled and begun to speak. Means the Holy Spirit doesn't take control of your mouth. Otherwise it will be witchcraft. The Holy Spirit doesn't control us. He leads us. He fills us. The Holy Spirit is not like the devil that takes hold of you and makes him to do what he wants. The Holy Spirit gives you utterance. Means he fills you on inside. You yield your tongue to him and he takes over and he speaks as he wishes. Now I understand you may say why tongues? You have to understand one thing is that your mind is very limited. You know of the problems that you know of right now in your life. The Holy Spirit knows of the problem you don't. 
the Holy Spirit knows of the problems of other people's lives and many times what he will do is when you will begin to pray he will begin to use your language to pray for the situations you right now don't even have an idea about and he will begin to use that sometimes you know he bypasses our limitation of our mind to pray the way he wants it to be prayed and that's why prayer in the Holy Spirit becomes a prayer that's pleasing to the Lord same thing when it comes to worship we are so limited in our English vocabulary but the Holy Spirit is able to pray how it is pleasing to the Lord and that's why I really want to encourage every single one of you that when you speak in tongues sometimes those tongues are actually angelic languages the Bible says in 1st Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 is that if I speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels Apostle Paul says that means when you speak in tongues not always but sometimes it's the language angels speak angels don't speak English when God allows them they can speak English to you but their language is different their, ang ing their language is not Russian their language is not Spanish they have a completely different language and when we go to heaven you're gonna speak their language even those of you who maybe think that the speaking in tongues is a charismatic idea wait till you get to heaven angels have a different language so when you speak in tongues sometimes you actually are speaking in the language of angels where you are speaking in a language that heaven speaks and God right away Holy Spirit tells angels what to do through speaking in tongues sometimes you speak in the language that actually people speak on the earth and Holy Spirit chooses to use that I heard a lot of stories I've met people who have these stories when they spoke in tongues and people were in the building who did not know Jesus and did not speak English and understood the message of Jesus clear and cut came got saved and asked them where which part of that country are they from and they said I have no idea what you're talking about and how Holy Spirit is able to use that because somebody say amen and number four don't be distracted by those who don't understand you know it's interesting that though this was the move of God though Jesus was behind it the Holy Spirit was behind it you know what some people said some said mocking some mocked some laughed and that's nothing new people still do that today people mock the idea that Jesus rose from the dead some of you you know who became Christians you're comfortable with that but then the idea that the Holy Spirit can use people today you might not be comfortable with that and as a Christian when you get filled with Holy Spirit do not be distracted with what people say we have to pay attention love and respect people but we have to go always back to the Word of God sometimes even a family will rise again and says you went to what you said what you speak in what in that church I told you stay away from those crazy people that's how it happens disciples had exactly the same thing people mocked them but you know what usually the mocking happens from who it comes mostly from it's not the people it's from us it's when you get filled with the Holy Spirit you begin to speak in tongues and it's so great it's so awesome and the next day this thought comes into your head I made all of that up we all have that I've had that I know when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit I called my pastor and I told him that I got filled with the Holy Spirit but honestly the only thing I had was a few syllables that was coming out I knew it was from the Holy Spirit and then it turned into a sentence and it felt so awesome, felt so great. I knew that was from the Holy Spirit. I see that in the Bible and I told my pastor, finally I got baptized with the, the Holy Spirit after like six months of praying. And then next morning I wake up and I literally have this cloud of thoughts that overwhelm my mind. Vlad, you made all of that up. Your tongues, they, you, they sound so weird. They sound so, so different. And I told the pastor, I said, I feel like so, this is like not, not, this is from me. The pastor says, well, it's supposed to be from you. It's supposed to be your mouth. But he says, every single person will have that. Just cast away those thoughts. He says, the Holy Spirit baptized you and don't look back. And I did that on Sunday and I never looked back. Hey, what's going on, guys? I want to share something with you guys very important today. I want to talk about what does the devil care about? I want to let you know today that the devil doesn't care about how many scriptures you know.